good morning. Uh, sorry if there's any wind noise. Okay, so today is Sunday and it's our last day in La Paz and Jeannie came up with the fantastic idea of renting some bicycles to go and take a ride all the way down the the Melocon. She's much better at that than me. Which is five kilometers total. Five kilometers total. And as you can see, we are going to take you along for this beautiful ride. Here we go. After you, my dear. Again, I apologize about the wind noise. I'm hoping that it's usable. Otherwise, we will uh, have to just detach the video in post and put in some music. I'm actually on the wrong side of the bike lane, but if I see someone coming the other direction, I'll quickly move to the right. But I figure right now, Jeannie and I would ride together. Out there, there's some type of hotel that there's an island that, I don't know if it's an island, there's a peninsula that goes all the way out. I don't know how it is, but kind of re removed from everything else and we're not really interested in being that far removed from the locals. And on that note, let me also tell you that as far as we can see, there's like very little tourists here. And we asked about that, and they said that La Paz doesn't really generate a whole lot of tourism unless it's in somewhere around November, December, January. And it's October, as you're well aware of. So, right now, we have seen so few tourists, it's not even funny. And the population here is really, really uh, small. That said, Last night was Saturday night, and out on the Malacan here, all we saw was kids. So it's a very, very popular place for younger people. Maybe tonight I'll either, maybe tonight I'll do a little B-roll of how it is at nighttime walking across the Malacan. Put in perspective right now, we're on the bike path and the Malacan walking part is right across the street. At some point, it'll combine. Everybody is very, very friendly here. Safety is not even a concern. This is where we take a stop and we're gonna cross over. 
for genie's sake, we'll probably get off the bikes and walk it across. They're very, very courteous here about pedestrians and bicyclers. Jeannie, let me know if at any time you feel like transferring up to the Malacan itself, like this guy did. I will. <laughs> Knowing you, you'll drive right off the edge, yeah. and that'll be the end. We'll have to airlift you back to the USA. <laughs> And that'll be the end of that. That'll be the end of the world tour, huh? Yep. <laughs> if, if you're tired of being behind me, you can get No, back. not at all. I'm in no rush. If you're going slower because you're tired, it's not if a problem. No, we'll come back with that. Because I'm actually doing drive-bys on the statues themselves. I could always come by and do some snapshots. Not exactly positive what these guys do here with their uh, boats here, whether they're fishermen or they transport goods or services. Uh, not really sure. They look like they just came in with a they got fish. Or looks, looks like they just came in with fish. Yeah, they're fishermen. So that's another thing. The fishing here is so good that they. Uh, bring in fresh catch and sell it to all these restaurants so when you order fish at dinner time you are getting fish that was caught that morning 100 percent and now we're going to be heading towards the malacom towards the busier part of La Paz right now, where there's more restaurants and stores. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you a little story about last night along this malacan there's streets that run parallel so last night we went to this restaurant called nim by the way off the charts good now when we came out there of there we took a wrong turn and we ended up instead of coming like three blocks back down to the malacan we probably went the opposite direction ended up going 10 15 I don't even know how many blocks north and into what you might consider the hood because it was dark it was absolutely desolate nobody there and it's every single thing that people are generally worried about as far as that's where it's gonna happen well I'm here to tell you today it didn't happen it was totally safe people are nice here they're not looking to rob you, kidnap you, kill you, mug you. It's just not true. As a matter of fact, we were so far off, we took one of these taxis and it took him about 15, 20 minutes for him to come from the Malacan that way back to where we're staying. And at the end, when I asked him how much, I thought he had said 500 pesos, and which is, Jeannie says, like $25 or something like that. And I said, mucho dinero. And he goes, no, no. And then he wrote it on his hand. Turned out to be 50 pesos. And that's so cheap 
that's like two dollars and fifty cents i gave him a hundred hundred pesos and the guy was like so happy so happy you know a little goes a long way for these people they actually work very hard to feed their families and they're honest hard-working people like Jeannie said I've yet to see a single beggar in Mexico no matter where we've been so far Let's see how far back she is from me. Oh, there she is. Come on up. Hola. Bum ba bum ba bum 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 ba bum ba bum bum ba bum ba bum 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 ba bum ba bum and your little doggy too. Hola. That's where we rented the bicycles. Right there. I'll introduce you to the guy later on. I believe his name is Rowan. God, I hope this uh, audio works out and there's not too much wind noise. I did uh, select on this GoPro to use the back camera so that the wind wasn't going directly into it. So, we'll see what happens. Here's a selfie crew. Perfecto. Hola, buenos dias. This is generally where it gets really crowded at night with young people. I've, I've told you before though, they take the pandemic very seriously and they're all wearing masks. And these restaurants are practicing social distancing. They must, okay? Because they're very, very fortunate to even be open. They have police here that if they find you not doing following social distancing and 50% capacity, they shut you down right then and there. That's it. They close you down. They ask the guests to go. They don't even have to pay. Goodbye. So they take this very, very, very seriously. Telling you right now, if you ever thought about coming to Mexico, definitely put La Paz on your hit list because it is special. And I, in my opinion, three nights is fine. Or three days, four nights. Not quite sure if I said this already, but to rent these two bikes for the whole day, 24 hours, was 250 pesos each. So for 500 pesos, we have two bikes. And that comes to roughly 25 US plus minus. Well worth it.
Very flat and easy to ride on this too. Effortless. Jeannie's bike is one speed beach cruiser. I've got the mountain bike. FYI, I believe her seat's more comfortable than mine, but I'm okay. Hola. Hola. Buenos dias. Are you starting to get the idea how friendly it is here? I hope so. Here comes our local police over there on the left. No, they don't pull you over and extort you. Hola, Brainstinas. There's a lot of uh, private houses too along the Malcon. And from what I'm guessing, this is pretty, you know, there's some wealthy people here. Not everyone's poor by any means. Here's another friendly fact. You have to be very careful when you're walking here because there's lots of stuff that you can trip over. Not everything's level or marked out, but in all fairness, it's not as deadly dangerous as walking in parts of Southeast Asia where you have exposed holes with rebar hanging out. So as you fall into the hole, you rip your leg right apart. But there is a lot of things to trip over. And if you are primarily wearing flip-flops like I do, you have to be extra careful because the next thing you know, you've broken your toes and now you're done. So we've actually been very careful, very conscious and have not hurt ourselves yet and are gonna continue to try not to. So also, this is our first time doing this. So we know as much as this, about this route as you watching it. So we're all exploring this all for the first time together. So as you've all were very, very concerned and worried, should we get shot and killed on this ride? We're bringing you along on that too. <laughs> Prohibited. No, oh, downhill bicycles. I don't want to do that. Well, let's just go up a little bit longer and see what's going on. We can always stop. Well, I need to stop anyway. Okay, I'll and stop. I All right, I'm going to shut it down for a second and then we'll continue. Jeannie's hot and claims she's getting sunburnt. So she wants to stop there and said, I should just continue on for a little while. 
turn around and come back and pick her up. So let's go take a look. Hopefully she's there when I get back. If not, she's been kidnapped. Like I told you earlier, in Mexico, stop signs are optional. All depends on how you want to handle it. Most of them just roll right through it. Always scratching my head why she stops when there's adventure ahead. Obviously, it's some type of marina. People launch their boats down there. See a net, so they're fishermen. All right, I'm pretty confident this might be the end of it. It goes further, but I don't know if I'm interested in going too much further without her. So I'm gonna flip it around and go back. Let's find out where she is. Okay, so she says she's about a half a mile down the Malacan in the shade. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's right up here in the shade somewhere. And I see her. There she is. Safe and sound. She found herself a little shady spot. And there she is, safe and sound like I told you.
terminal. You haven't rented a car and you came to La Paz, that is where you're getting dropped off. If you're leaving La Paz, that is where you're going to to go to another destination. Yet we still have not gone bill fishing yet, but